Different memes come and go, drifting through our cultural consciousness, some sticking around for years and others blinking out of relevance in months or even weeks. But what would you say if I told you that one of the most successful memes is actually the term meme itself? Hi, my name is Jamie Harvey, and in high school, I wanted to be a scientist. Then I discovered that science is a ruthless cutthroat game and decided to be a humanities major instead. But once you fall in love with science, you can never truly lose that spark. So I decided to combine my passion for science and my journalism and sociology skills to bring you Modern Memetics, a podcast about scientific words and phrases that inhabit the public consciousness. When you think of the word meme, you're probably thinking of it in the colloquial sense. You know, lipstick in my face. No, no, memes. If you're a nerd like me, you might think of the term in its sociological sense, as in the study of memetics. Hey, isn't that the name of the podcast? We'll get back to that later. However, the word meme wasn't created by a sociologist or an absolute 420 meme god. It was coined by evolutionary biologist Richard Dawkins in his 1976 book, The Selfish Gene. The Selfish Gene was one of those rare science books that pushed the academic field forward while being interesting and approachable enough to capture the public's interest. In the 1960s and early 70s, evolutionary biologists mostly thought on the level of individual organisms and groups. But to Dawkins, it was all about the gene. In his view, an individual being is just a throwaway survival machine for the self-replicating coded information which it contains. To him, organisms act not to preserve their species or themselves, but to propagate their own genes. Think about it. You, scrolling endlessly through your phone, are part of an unbroken genetic line that stretches all the way back to the first living organisms on Earth. There are genes which are identical to what they were tens of millions of years ago, hundreds of millions of years ago in a few cases. In the last chapter of his book, Dawkins really wanted to hammer home that self-replicating packets of information are subject to Darwinian evolution, not just the self-replicating information stored in DNA. But actually anything which has that property of making exact copies of themselves, anything that has that property would do. So he came up with the concept of memes to illustrate his point. Where a gene is a unit of biological inheritance, a meme is a unit of cultural inheritance. He reasoned that just like genes stay around for thousands of years by replicating themselves in generation after generation, ideas can stay relevant by replicating themselves from person to person. And I used examples like whistling a tune. Somebody else catches the tune and they whistle the tune and they walk off into the street whistling the same tune and somebody else catches it. Under this definition, memes have been around since the beginning of human civilization. The happy birthday song is a meme. Happy birthday to you. Biting your thumb at someone is a meme. Do you buy your thumb at a sir? I do buy my thumb, sir. The concept of God is a meme. Under this definition, the word meme as we use it in everyday life to describe, you know, Sussy baka. is even a meme. We all kind of understand what memes are. And that information replicates itself when a person subjects somebody else to the internet. Although, ironically, individual memes change too fast to fit Dawkins' original definition, which focuses on the near-identical copying of information from one generation to the next. Anyway, Dawkins didn't develop the concept of a meme to be a hard-hitting scientific theory. It was intended as more of an interesting analogy to explain how genes work. But then somebody told the sociologists about it starting a decades-long academic <laughs> The study of memetics is an academic discipline focused on how ideas propagate. That's why this podcast is called Modern Memetics, because it's about words and phrases that spread through public consciousness. The field also spawns several different, loudly competing, theories about memes. Some scholars adhere closely to the evolutionary genetic model of memes, attempting to find cultural counterparts for genetic concepts like genotypes, phenotypes, and DNA. Another, more popular biologically-based understanding of memes is the epidemiological approach, which treats memes as a virus which spreads from person to person. I think this is a better analogy because as we are all intimately freaking aware of at this point in time, viruses are very good at evolving to become more transmissible. Anyway, this theory posits that memes are like viruses that spread from person to person through instances of communication, the cultural equivalent <laughs> of sneezing. Oh yeah. And while all of these debates were going on in the ivory towers of academia, the internet latched onto the idea of memes and just completely f***ing ran with it. Scholars sometimes try to use the phrase internet meme to differentiate between the broader sociological definition of memes and the more specific online version, but since internet memes are so much more sociologically relevant than the esoteric definitions debated by sociologists, they're often just referred to as memes. As the societal influence of memes grew, academia took notice. 
political scientists now write papers about how memes impact the political landscape. I'm just chilling in Cedar Rapids. Extremist scholars publish books about how hate groups use memes to radicalize young men. Pepe's become kind of a symbol. And some economists try their best to measure how memes can impact the economy. At this point, scholars really needed a solid definition of what internet memes actually are. So I decided to read the book, Memes and Digital Culture, by Lee Moore Schiffman, to try to find one. Or well, I listened to the audiobook, but that totally counts. Audible hopes you have enjoyed this program. Anyway, how Schiffman views internet memes is very different from all the other ideas that we've talked about so far. Like how Dawkins thinks of individual organisms as just tools for the propagation of their genes, scholars who believe in biologically based theories of memes think of individual people as just tools for propagating memes. I mean, when you hum along to a song, are you really humming it because you chose to, or are you humming it because the song was so catchy that it made you? Schiffman thinks about this idea a lot in her book. Mainly, she thinks it's freaking stupid. Schiffman cites social scientist Rosaria Conte's assertion that people are not vectors of cultural transmission, but actors behind the process. With that said, it's no surprise that Schiffman's discussion of internet memes focuses a lot on human agency. Unlike genes that are passed down from one generation to the next, relatively unchanged, Internet memes are deliberately altered by people for a variety of reasons, to make them more spreadable, to help convey an idea, or just because they thought it'd be funny. This idea is central to Schiffman's definition of a meme as a group of digital items sharing common characteristics of content, form, and or stance that were created with awareness of each other and were circulated, imitated, and or transformed via the internet by many users. In her eyes, it's you the user with the power. end on a really powerful note from Schiffman. Thank you for listening to Modern Memetics. I've been your host, Jamie Harvey. Tune in next time to hear about another interesting science word or phrase that's made its way into the public consciousness. <laughs>